Human nature is about collaboration in a very broad sense. It's collaboration between the different institutions that organize the show, between our museum, Museum of Contemporary Art San Diego, the Berkeley Art Museum and Pacific Film Archive, and RARE, which is a conservation organization based out of Washington, D.C. It's an exhibition that we've been working on for the past five or six years, and it's one that was really the brainstormer child, if you will, of uh, the director of RARE, this conservation organization, and our director, Hugh Davis here at the Museum of Contemporary Art. The concept for the exhibition arose from a meeting I had with Brett Jenks, who is the executive director of the Rare Center for Tropical Conservation. Hugh and I sat down in his office in La Jolla, and uh, we, we began to talk about a way of working together. Is there a way that our two organizations could collaborate to do something whereby artists work with conservation? And out of that brainstorming session, it developed that the Rare Center for Tropical Conservation had been um, invited by UNESCO to help prepare a list of World Heritage Natural Sites. And through that process, they had made good contacts in any number of places, um, World Heritage Sites around the world, so that they could provide access for artists to visit these sites and to visit them accompanied by scientists or um, botanists, what have you, ornithologists, so they could have a, a uh, facilitated visit that would take them below the tourist level and they could really, as much as possible in a short visit, enter these places in a significant way. And after these limited residencies, the idea was that they would make work in response to that opportunity and that we would then present the resulting work as an exhibition. The title of the show is Human Nature, um, Artists Responding to a Changing Planet. So many of the artists really have engaged both aspects of human and nature. It's no surprise that immediately upon arrival in the sites that, that these artists visit, immediately after recovering from the overwhelming beauty of the place or the remoteness of the place. There's a need for human engagement. And it didn't surprise me at all to see that many of these artists found their most profound experiences in their interaction with the local inhabitants. Rare's approach to conservation is focused entirely on the engagement of local people, uh, the conversations that take place, and the co-designing of projects that enable people to benefit from the environment while protecting it. So that fits perfectly in line with our approach to conservation as well. We were giving artists the opportunity to pick sites from all over the world. They really had their run of the, of the globe. And they were all going to different sites and then coming back and showing work in response to those visits. I now realize it's so expensive and so cumbersome that there's a good reason why no other museums have done this before, to my knowledge. We early on invited the Berkeley Art Museum to partner with us in this venture. Our museum and the Berkeley Art Museum too has a really, they both have long histories of engaging artists to create new work and commissioning artists to do new things. We didn't choose works of art, we chose artists. And so we chose practices and belief systems. And it's really a project that's been based on trust, trust between the institutions, trust between the artists and us and the site. So it truly has been a creative process because in going into the project, we didn't know what the project would be. I find really exciting. It's something that we're really offering the artist a kind of blank check, if you will. They, they're able to go out to these sites and there's no predetermined structure or mandate. There's no particular issues that we're asking them to focus on other than the fact that all of the sites that they're going to have been recognized by UNESCO as endangered sites around the globe. When the project was proposed to us, a group of artists met here in San Diego and uh, curators and the people from RARE, they were very open, they were very actually almost forceful in saying that they wanted this to be an experimental 
project. They didn't want us to, that we shouldn't feel burdened by even making an object or produce, showing anything. I, in my own practice as a curator, look for those opportunities where I can just say to an artist, go, just do it, and, and we'll be your platform, we'll be your host for this. And, and really then our role becomes much more about the presentation and bringing the audience to the work. I think luckily because of the people involved and the way the institutions approached it, I felt completely free. We see artists as the canary in the coal mine. They're often literally the avant-garde. They're the first wave of people who are thinking about some of these issues and thinking about them in a, in a very critical but undirected way. So they're not being told by a government agency, when you go out we need the spin on this to be that the first world is not polluting, we really need to blame China and India. These are artists that have no agenda, they have no um, political strings attached, they're just going out and, and, and telling it the way they see it and reporting back in very compelling forms with video and photography and creating objects. The artists were clearly uncomfortable with their role in the beginning and I think they, they don't want to be ambassadors for the conservation movement, but they do want to be part of the experience. They didn't want to be tourists, but they did have to travel to these sites to get to know them. I, I think they're very, they were reluctant to try to do anything remotely um, uh, intentional from a conservation standpoint, and they worked hard to figure out how to apply their, their skills um, and their frameworks, their, the lens through which they see the world, to a, a conservation context. And some of the artists like Inigo said, look, you're inviting me to be in this project, but I'm not going to be an ambassador for nature. There's a politics, right? There's a politics to making art. Everything has politics. And there's a politics to curating and organizing and collaborating and so forth. And we are all engaged in a particular sort of view of the world. It's my job as an artist to sort of look at things that even, even things that are progressive and look at them critically, right? And to be careful how I engage myself within any system. When you were a conservationist and you were going out and visiting these sites, you enter them uh, in a context that's very different than a contemporary artist arriving in one of these sites. And the contemporary conservation movement um, is both rich and um, an amazing endeavor and also can be seen as problematic. And many parts of the world, conservation has been separate from people. Um, that's something that RARE does quite well, is that they believe that environmental conservation is a human problem, it's an issue of coexistence, it's um, not a matter of sealing off our most fragile places, but conservation has not always been that way. And human nature is an interesting project because it's, um, it's acknowledging that explicitly. And by sending artists into these sites where only conservationists from the West or Western scientists have been working before. Um, has made a really interesting difference in how they were responded to by the local communities. Um, it's very different arriving as a contemporary artist than as a biologist or a conservationist. Artists have a unique ability to focus attention and thinking on a topic uh, in a way that nobody else can. And I think when people go through this exhibition, they will be drawn to these sites and, and understand the nature of these ecological challenges in a way that a dry scientific paper or a UN report couldn't possibly underscore. RARE has really worked to become uh, a, 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 a much better uh, communicator, especially to local audiences that inhabit these really critically important places. And I think the, the contemporary art world sort of provides one extreme end of the communication spectrum. In some ways, they share similar challenges. How do you take abstraction and make it relevant to a general audience? Conservationists have to work with the challenge of taking uh, 
things that we've taken for granted forever that may seem abstract and bringing them into your household and into your daily life. So there's a lot we have in common and a lot that I think artists and conservationists can learn from each other. And human nature as a project exemplifies that. The success of the project doesn't hinge on whether the, the art in the galleries actually engages the question of conservation as much as it is. It's about using contemporary art to open people's eyes about new ways of seeing the world.